Okay, so hello everyone. Today let me show you an update compression test on this 4D56 diesel engine on my 1986 uh, Mitsubishi Pajero. I've already performed an engine overhaul or engine rebuild on this thing. Uh, I would like to apologize. I was not able to make a video out of that. Something came up that uh, I had to do it quickly and uh, making a, a video out of it uh, was no longer an option so uh, I really apologize for that but basically these are the the uh, parts that I replace these are the sleeves I replace the sleeves I also replace the pistons so hell as a overhauling gasket I also replace the uh, water pump this is connected to the uh, water pump you know I mean the water pipe is connected to the water pump this is supposed to connect to the cylinder head of course uh, piston rings uh, bushings and I also replace the uh, connecting rod uh, conrad bearings as well as the crankshaft bearings so anyway uh, if you recall on my last video uh, the only uh, working cylinder that I have is the cylinder number four as you can see I will try to drop that down so still is uh, the clearance between the piston as well as the cylinder the sleeve is only about uh, 0 0.4 but basically the manual calls for a clearance of uh, between the piston I mean the piston sleeve I mean this the skirt from here uh, on the outer wall of the cylinder sleeve the manual calls only for clearance of 0 0.2 millimeters so this already has a clearance of 0 0.4 but this is the only working cylinder that I have uh, if I'm not mistaken the clearance between this and this piston is about 15 point 15 uh, point 15 millimeters as you can see it will just drop down right down uh, this is the worst cylinder of all uh, this is a clearance or a difference of 0.30 millimeters uh, that's why uh, there's really no compression on this one it will just drop, drop right down see? and this is its clearance of uh, between the cylinder wall as well as on the piston uh, about 10.10 10 millimeters so basically this is the only working piston that I have I mean working cylinder so anyway uh, I also discovered that uh, when I opened it up, uh, the end gap of the piston ring is already too wide. Uh, uh, let me just show you, okay? See, uh, that's about that wide, okay? I hope you can see that. So I don't think you no longer need to use a filler gauge. That's about uh, maybe two millimeters wide. See, uh, so I also replace that with a uh, standard uh, 91, not 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 necessarily standard, but 91.1 uh, piston rings with 0.25. So I just ground it off and made the clearance of. Uh, 6.6 .6 millimeters uh, the manual calls for 0 0.20 or to 0 0.40 but uh, I made it to 0.6 uh, millimeters so anyway uh, that's it uh, now uh, this engine right here has already been running for a bit about two weeks now so let's try to perform a compression test again let's see if uh, there's a huge difference between the last compression test that I did before engine rebuilt and right now. So before performing an engine rebuilt, uh, I mean an uh, engine compression test, I'm going to start this engine just so we can have the oil uh, circulating inside the engine as well as on the pistons and the cylinder wall. So uh, again, uh, I would also would like to point out one good indication that you have good, uh, good compression is that if you, you if you're able to start the engine without the aid of a uh, glow plug so 
right now this is the relay for the glow plugs i've disconnected it so uh the current is no longer going to go directly to the glow plug so it's no longer going to uh start the glow plugs that is one way well very very crudely crudely not scientific but that is one good way to know if we have a good compression or an engine if it's the if the engine is going to start uh immediately or i mean it's not going to hard start then that's one at least a uh, crude way of telling that we still have good uh, uh we, we already have good compression okay but uh nothing beats a compression test uh, leak down test it's more scientific but just in case you don't have that uh, those tools so one good indication again is to try to start the engine without having the glow plugs connected or without having to uh, initiate the glow plug so let's do that now but uh, before that you know uh, let's give it a good pump so we can uh, rule out the possibility of the engine not starting because of uh, lack of introduction of diesel so should this engine start uh, almost immediately even without a glow plug so that's a good indication of uh, we have a good compression on our engine so let me do that now disconnected our engine did not hard start so we have a good compression well uh, again a uh, little warning that's only a uh, crude way of telling if you still have good compression okay uh, I still would not recommend uh, if nothing beats a compression test okay so I'm going to let this engine run for maybe two to five minutes and then we con uh, we will perform a compression test again Okay, so let's check. There's no more blow by. Oil is no longer getting out. No smoke. See, if there's so much blow by, uh, that deep stick hole right there is going to be, uh, begin to be squirting smoke. There's none of that. Let's, let's, check, on, let's check on the oil cup. Okay, so no smoke. Are there any blow by? Let's check on the breather holes. And there's none of that as well. Okay. So let's perform the compression test. Okay, so cylinder number one. Cylinder number two. Okay, so cylinder number three. Okay, and finally, cylinder number four. Okay, so basically these are the results. Uh, this refers to the results of the previous two videos that I did the before engine rebuild, the cranking compression test and the manual compression test and the leak down test which I did uh, one after the other. So uh, this is the compression test results after the engine rebuild. Basically all of the cylinders gave us uh, more or less 400 PSI. So uh, this is dry test only so I no longer found the need to conduct a wet test as well as a leak down test because uh, I can now tell that I now have a perfectly working engine so basically 400 uh, standard value of 400 PSI actually the first uh, cranking compression test that I did before engine rebuilt it gave us 440 this is the uh, only working cylinder uh, it's beyond 412 PSI but so basically after engine rebuilt all of them gave us more or less 400 PSI uh, compression so there's no deviation uh, of our maximum deviation between cylinders of 42 PSI in this case there's none of that so 
anyway i do believe that's it uh if you like this video please subscribe and like thank you for watching again i would like to apologize if i was not able to perform a video on the actual engine rebuild itself so anyway thank you for watching